Yes, we are back at wearing our Oktoberfest outfits. It's Oktoberfest in Munich. You didn't hear anything about it, I guess, because it has been cancelled. It's not happening on the large Theresienwiesen. It's only happening in the restaurants and breweries. However, we still celebrate it and I want to show you today how to make pretzel braids. So what are pretzel braids? Well, they are kind of pretzels because they are made with some lye and they are braided. Today I want to show you how to make pretzels or pretzel rolls with lye. I've showed you in other videos like the pretzels or the pretzel muffins how to make those with some soda. But some people asked how to make them with some real lye and uh, I decided to show it to you but I will get to that a little later in this video. So for the dough we need these ingredients. 500 grams of flour, 7 grams of yeast, and I'm using this yeast this time, Levito, and I'm using this brand today, they're not paying me for that just so that you know, but um, I found that this is a very good yeast and it is without chemicals, which I like a lot. Then we also need 10 grams of salt, and 15 grams of something that can, I can only translate as baking stuff. It's called Backmittel and I mix it myself. So it uh, at the moment contains 10 grams of dry malt powder, which is this product. 3 grams of dextrose, as we call it. I think in English it should be without the E on the end, so it's probably dextrose. And some soy lecithin and these three things give the rolls a certain lift and taste and color and don't worry if you do not have these ingredients you can just use the dry malt but you should at least use this you can get this at amazon i will put you a link below the video so you can find the product at amazon all right then also you need 15 grams of butter and 270 milliliters of water and all these ingredients in u.s customary measurements are also on the blog post printable recipe and you can switch there between the metric and the u.s customary measurements then later for the rolls you will of course need some salt so the the larger grains of salt and then for the lye you will need 965 milliliters of water that's about four cups and 35 grams of sodium hydroxide and um, you're creating basically a lye with 3.5 percent you can also use a little more for a little darker lye but the solution should not have more than four percent so maximum 40 grams of lye on this amount of water and I have not measured this yet because uh, there's a little more to lie that you need to know. Please follow my instructions that I will get to later. Um, it's very important that you work safely with these kinds of things. So let's get started. I'll first sieve the flour into the bowl. And this makes the flour real fluffy. It's not that I expect any big lumps of things to be in this flour. It's just to, to fluff off the whole thing so it's not that packed anymore. Okay, then I'm also adding the yeast and the baking stuff or the malt if you're just using that. I mix this in. And I'm adding the water. And sometimes people ask me what brand of flour I'm using. Today I'm using gold medal flour, all-purpose flour. Um, that's what I just had here. You can also use some bread flour or other brands, 
that should work just as fine. So the salt and the butter will go into the dough a little later. I'm starting to mix this or knead this for about a minute or two on a very slow speed until everything is kind of mixed. And then I will add the salt and the butter and increase the speed of the kneading. And then I will knead it for about eight to 10 minutes. So let's take a look at the dough. It is very, very soft, very nice, very easy to work with. So I'm just shaping this into a sphere. It's really nice to touch it. It's very, very soft. And um, so I'm going to cover it and let it rest for about 10 minutes now. All right, so the dough could relax a little bit and bond a little better. Now it's time to portion the individual dough balls for the braids. So I want to make like nine braids and that means I have to make nine portions of about equal weight and that should be like 90 grams. See, that's a little too much. So I'm measuring this. Let me see what that is in ounces. So it's 3.21 ounces. And I really highly recommend getting a scale for most of my recipes, but especially for all the baking recipes. It's much more precise to really measure the ingredients and also the water. It's very important to really measure the, the water or any liquid that has to go into a baking goods because these, these large measuring things here, if you just have a little more or less than, than it's uh, on the scale here, um, it's, you know, it makes a huge difference because it has a very large surface. So it's always better to really use a scale and if I say like we need 965 milliliters, it's 960 grams of water. Okay, so I will shape all these dough portions into a ball and I'm using the method that I showed you in other videos. It's sometimes a little bit difficult to do it on this very smooth surface, so I'll do it on the side here. So what I'm basically doing is that um, I'm making circular movements with my hands. I press it down in the beginning a little bit, and then I make a hollow hand and just let it circle in my hand. As I said, it's difficult on this way too smooth surface. But after a while it should look like this on the bottom and be very smooth on the top. And all this movement to shape these into spheres has created some stress on the dough. And for that reason, I need to let it relax for another 10 minutes so I can shape it. So don't skip this step. It's very important to be able to shape the dough a little later. And therefore, it really needs to have these 10 minutes of rest. So cover this again and just wait a little bit. Okay, now it comes to shaping. I take one of these dough balls and I shape this into a log. So let me show you now how to shape these braids. So I take this string of dough and you know, if it's about one third here, I'll make a loop like this 
yeah? And then I will take this strain and pull it through here, okay? So now I take the loop down here and just turn it and I'll take the remaining strain and pull it in here. So this creates the braid, okay? Let me tuck this in a little more, fix this, and this goes here on a baking sheet now with some parchment paper. Next. Okay, let me show this to you again. So about one third, I make a loop like this. I take this string, I pull it through here, I twist the loop and I pull this through this loop. And there you have it. Okay, and I'll continue this with all the dough balls and then I'll show you what I do next. So these pretzels have to rise now and I will let them rise until they are almost double their size, maybe a little less, so like maybe one third. And um, before they're entirely the size I want them, I will put them into the fridge for about 10 minutes. And there's a reason why I'm doing that. When I dip these into the lye, I don't want them to soak in the lye. And when I put these into the fridge a little later without any plastic on top, they will create a little bit of a skin on top. And this will prevent the lye from soaking into the uh, braids and will result in a much better tasting and much better looking braid later on. Uh, the fridge that you use should not have less than 41 degrees Fahrenheit or 5 degrees Celsius, so it shouldn't be too cold because the yeast will stop working if it's colder than that. Okay, so you can see this has increased in size and I will put this now into the fridge for about 10 minutes. So we are getting now to the chemistry part of this recipe. You can see I have added another apron to my outfit. I definitely want to protect my dirndl. Um, other things that you might want to protect is of course your work surface here in the kitchen. I am actually really a little bit worried about the backdrop that I'm putting on my kitchen island when I film. So I put some um, baking sheet uh, underneath and um, then you will also need some protective glasses. I really ha recommend using these. Um, sodium hydroxide is corrosive and you don't want this in your eyes or on your skin. There is a lot of discussion about whether to wear or not to wear gloves while doing this. Um, the, the upside on gloves, if they are really protective for this kind of chemical, is that of course you don't burn your skin. The downside is you might touch the lye. Um, you'll be less careful if you're wearing gloves and that increases the chance that you spill something or you know spread some of the lye in your kitchen or on some other surfaces. So for that reason I personally have decided not to wear gloves but I will definitely wear these glasses and um, that is so the safety part of this um, recipe. Now there's a little more you need to know but let me first measure the amount of um, sodium hydroxide that I need. So I want to have somewhere between 35 and 40 grams of this. Yeah, let's make it 38, ah, oh, 39. I like to be somewhere in the middle. So the more hydroxide, sodium hydroxide you use, the darker will be the baking ware. But as I said, don't use more than 40 grams on one liter or a little less than one liter, otherwise it will be too much. So now also very important is that you never put the water into the sodium hydroxide. You first pour the water into the bowl and then you'll slowly add the sodium hydroxide. 
um, while you're doing that, it creates some heat. So do it slowly. And as I said, don't do it the other way around. First the water, then the sodium hydroxide. And you can use the lye several times. I would say like three to four times. A little bit depending on how much you're baking with each batch. And you can keep this in a container that you close very well and put somewhere far away from children. In general, I would not recommend doing this while children are around or little children are around. Um, first of all, they can distract you. Second of all, um, if they get in touch with that, that might be really, really bad. If you get some of the lye on your skin, definitely immediately um, wash it off with lots of water. And if you get some in your eyes, which you can hopefully prevent by wearing safety glasses, um, then you should, for 20 minutes, um, wash your eyes out with clear water and then immediately go to a doctor. Oh, and also you need to know the water is cold. Don't use this on hot water, okay? It has to be cold water. So when you're done with the lye and you want to dispose of it, you can pour it into the drain, but you should still dilute it some more. So like opening the cold water uh, faucet on full and slowly and carefully pour in the lye. Make sure it doesn't splash anywhere. Just be careful. And once you've um, poured all the lye into the drain, just continue to let water flow through the pipes just to make sure it all really goes down the drain. So and I can really feel here how warm the water has become by adding the lye. And um, there's still some here that doesn't want to dissolve. That's okay. I used a little more anyway. So I will now get the pretzel braids out of the fridge and will start to work with the lye. So the pretzel braids have created some thin skin on the top. It's not sticky or something at all anymore. So I will now carefully take one of these braids, put them on here into the lye, turn it once or twice. It shouldn't last more than like four seconds. And then I will just put it back onto the baking sheet. And you definitely need to have some of the parchment paper because this becomes really sticky. So and be careful that you do not touch the tools and you might be tempted to touch the braids, but you can't. And don't worry, the natrium, the sodium hydroxide will be totally disappeared after baking. So this is not dangerous to eat. Okay. Another thing to know is that once you're finished your work, you should rinse all your tools before you put them into the dishwasher. So just rinse them with some cold water. And it's okay to work really slow here. That's just making things safer. This will go into the oven now and I have preheated the oven to 220 degrees Celsius which is 430 degrees Fahrenheit and I will bake them without any steam for 12 minutes. So, and this is the result. You can but don't have to mist them a little bit for some extra glaze. And that's basically it. So there's one little thing that didn't work out for me today perfectly because of all the filming here. I forgot to preheat the oven in time. So after I had uh, put the braids into the lye, uh, I had to wait a little longer until the oven had reached the right temperature. For that, the lye had to be on the braids for a little longer than I wanted. And that resulted in some uneven 
little dots on the top. It doesn't change the taste, it doesn't uh, change anything about the quality, it's just it doesn't look as nice as I wanted it to look. Um, on the blog post you will find some troubleshooting about the whole recipe and some more information also on the lie. And um, if you feel like the whole lie thing is a little bit too much for you and some sort of uh, scary, you can definitely use the soda um, method and I will just uh, mention how to do that on the blog post too so you can look it up there again or you go to one of my previous pretzel videos and see how I'm doing it there. Okay, so I let this cool now for a minute and then I will take one and show you how it looks from the inside. So let's have one of these. So let me show you, still a little hot. So you can see how fluffy this is. Mm. <laughs> um, this is absolutely perfect. Even better with some butter. Just as it's supposed to taste. This is really, it tastes exactly like if you buy it in Germany. Mm. Wonderful. Now I'll probably bake another batch for the photos so that the uneven um, skin on these is not on the pictures. Um, but I'm never worried about having too many of any pretzel kind of things because you can always make some pretzel dumplings with the leftovers and they are just the best dumplings in the world. You can find the recipe here and I can highly recommend trying that. So bake as many as you want and make some pretzel dumplings. Yeah, so this concludes my video. I hope I explained everything in a way that you understand. Be careful with the lie, but don't shy away because it's too dangerous. If you just listen to what I've told you and read maybe on the blog post a little more about it, it should be no problem for you to do that. So, thank you for watching this video and being part of my German cooking community. Please watch some more of my videos. There are plenty of Oktoberfest videos already on the blog and on the channel. Enjoy watching it and I hope you will be back for the next video next Saturday. Bye!